What's up YouTube, it's Anthony. Today we're gonna go over how to get a cinematic look in DaVinci Resolve. Let's jump into it. Okay, so the first thing that we wanna focus on in DaVinci is always first making sure that our footage is coming out of the camera as clear as possible. We wanna make sure that we're shooting either vlog or if you guys are shooting on, on a camera that, that shoots Rec. 709, just make sure you're getting your image as flat as possible. Try to take the contrast all the way out. Try to take the saturation all the way out. For this video that we're gonna be going over, I'm gonna be using Panasonic Evil One footage. It's a 5.7K sensor and I shot it at 4K in Panasonic Vlog. So I'm gonna to toss that into my project and we're gonna get started. Okay, first things first, as we get into DaVinci, you're gonna see over here to the left side, you're gonna have your Macintosh, you're gonna have your data, and if you have any other external hard drives or drives plugged in, it'll be, it'll be right here in this, in this left area in the media storage. So you could turn that off or you could add it in. For me, I already have clips in here, but if you wanted to, you could just click on this Macintosh users Go to your, your desktop or wherever you have everything stored and then you could just drag it straight in from there. Um, so as, as, as we go through here, everything, I'm going to be going from scratch. So as you guys could see, everything is, it's flat. It's all vlog right now. And so uh, from here, um, if you guys wanted to do your, your edit, I'm not going to make an edit because I already did this for you guys. This is just going to be color grading tutorial. But um, as, as we start to go through, I'll start to let you guys know what I do, how I do it, and my thought process behind it. So first things first is uh, I do have these black crop bars. Uh, I am just going to scale this up so that way I can get it get it out so we can just see full screen. Um, same thing over here, 1.08. Okay, cool. So uh, this is a music video that I shot for my friend. Uh, and I was shooting it on the Panasonic EVO 1, uh, shooting at 4K. And so today what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over a simple node tree for you guys. I'm going to show you guys what it looks like and how I uh, add in my colors, what I do, and how I get that cinematic look for it. So first things first is we're going to jump over here and we're going to create a couple of nodes. For me on Mac, this is uh, option S. So I'm going to make about eight different nodes, okay. I like to just do that and then my two extra nodes back here, cool. The last one I always keep for grain and yeah, I just like to have it out there. So this is what, what my node tree looks like. Um, again, the node tree is gonna look different to every other person. Some people put them up here, some, it, it, it doesn't really matter. It's just as long as you find something that works for you. For me, I've found that this works for me. So the first thing I'm gonna do is um, I'm going to add a color space transform. Now color space transform, what it does is it just allows you some more space within your camera settings and the color settings to be able to edit uh, more effectively. So I'm gonna drag that on. If, if you don't have any of this stuff and maybe yours just looks like this, you have to come up here to the top and click on nodes click on effects and then you could either type it in or scroll down and find color space transform. So I normally use it towards the end. Um, the input color space, I'm gonna use uh, the timeline, but the input gamma, I'm actually gonna put that over to uh, Panasonic Vlog. So uh, as you can see, it changed it uh, to Rec. 709 and the output gamma, we're actually going to use Cineon film log. Now, the reason why we use Cineon film log is that's gonna work with our LUT and that's gonna make everything just uh, be able to pull my more dynamics out of the scene. Now, from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a LUT onto here. So, in film looks, you have, th this is, in my opinion, DaVinci has some amazing film looks and I really, like I have LUTs and all that stuff, but the film looks in here, I, I normally stick to the um, I normally stick to the Rec. 709 Kodak 2383. Uh, I'll normally range between the D55 and the D60. So we're gonna just see how that looks. So that is it, it's a little cool. So let's see how the uh, let's see how the D55 looks. Okay, so it warmed it up a little bit. Now that's already as you guys see, it's already looking pretty cinematic. Even if I zoom in, it looks pretty cool. It looks pretty dope. We still have a lot of work to do and a lot of room to work with. But for the most part, I kind of like how that look is setting us up at. So for the first one, this is going to be, I'm only going to focus on my baseline. I'm going to focus on my gamma. And so uh, it is a little dark 
for me, so I'm going to brighten it up a little bit. I just want to, normally I pull it up all the way high and then I, I backtrack from there. Uh, and for some reason, my scopes are not working right now. Okay, so from here, with the gamma, I'm going to drag it back down a little bit. I'm going to pull the highlights down just a tad and I'm actually going to boost the shadows just a little bit. Okay, so if I toggle that on and off, for me, I like to pull as much as I can out of it first and then work my way down from there. So um, from here, the second one is going to be my curves. My curves um, my curves is going to be, so I'm going to actually drag this up a little bit, okay, drag the top down a little bit just to give us a little more space and a little more room to work with. And then from here, we're going to create a nice little curve. Okay, bring this up a little bit. Okay, nice. And so now if we toggle this on and off, that's off, that's on. Now it's already giving us that nice look to it. And so what I did here, and what I did here, you can see the difference. So one, two, bam. And now it's just giving our image a lot more picture clarity. It's giving us a lot more details in the shadows, a lot more details even in the highlights as well, which I love. From there, the next one, I'm actually going to put bring in some saturation. So for me, I like to just, again, this is to each their own. Uh, for me, I like to blast my saturation out the water and just see how it looks from here and then, and then work my way back. So um, that's with it. Oops. So that's with it and that's without it. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually utilize the key output and so I'm going to pull it down to where I like it. First, take it all the way back, bring it in to where I do like it. And I think it sits pretty nice right there. Okay. So that gives us a nice natural tone. Look at his skin right there. It doesn't look like there's too much life. And now we're bringing the life back into his skin. Okay. And then um, from here as well, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add in And from here, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to work with the offset and the lift a little bit. And I want to get like a vintage look, so I'm actually going to pull it off to the left a little bit. And so from here, it's giving me, that's what I did to it. And I'm, I'm really liking this because what it's doing is it's giving me a vintage look to it, which I really, which is what I was going for. So this, this vibe, this style, obviously you see the palm trees, it kind of has like that LA feel to it. I, I want it to have that, that warmness. I want it to have that that grit to it um, and, and ultimately I'm really liking how this is looking so far so this is before and that's after so from here the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add some halation I use halation all the time in all a lot of my projects and so I'm going to bring this up and I don't really use the isolation too much I normally stay within the secondary glow and so we're gonna bring this up and I normally change it to get a nice, nice orange. Let's see how that looks. Okay. Nice. And as you can see with the halation, see how it's glowing off of his hat. Now I'm not going to do too, too much. Let's just see. Okay. Okay, and I like how that's looking right there. And so you could always do a global blend as well. Just kind of like if you need to pull it back or push it up, you can always. I normally sit around 0.7. That normally looks pretty good. So this is without it, this is with it. And then from here, I'm actually gonna create one more. Let's see, I kind of want to add some stuff. Um, I'm actually gonna add a glow. And this glow is actually going to be more for the highlights, but I'm actually going to go away from the orange because I want that teal look, okay? So we're gonna see how this looks and then we're gonna go from here. And what this is doing, now I'm giving it more of like that vintage-y, glowy, halation-y 
and I'm also like saving the blues as well. So even too, looking back at that, it's a little too much. Let's go a little down. Let's also bring this global blend. So that way it's just slight, slight differences. You see that? See how it's like barely changing anything. Okay, that's perfect. Now, now that we got all of our steps done, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna add grain. Okay, so type in grain, film grain, and normally I like to zoom in for this part because I like to see how nice it looks. Okay, and I'm going to use the 16 millimeter 500T. I'm gonna drag the opacity up and then I'm gonna drag it back down. And I will say, the one thing I did forget to do is I forgot to add blur. So I'm gonna add that in now. I'm gonna add this, add that. Let me just clean this up for you guys. Okay, here we go. Boom, boom. Cool, okay, so Gaussian blur. And what this does is it's gonna make everything just fit to the style of what you're going for. Go to where you like it, soften it. I like it normally around 1.1. One. Uh, from here, I'm gonna go back to my grain and we're gonna go from here of what looks good. Okay, and then I'm actually going to add in some saturation to it because I do like the saturation grain, okay? And we're gonna fit this back, we're gonna see how that looks. And for me, I love how that looks. To me, that looks really good. That's the exact style that I was trying to hit with this video. If I go from start to finish, this is what it looked like before, and this is what it looks like after. Looks like before and after. And to me, I'm very happy with that look. And now I'm gonna even try it over here. So I'm just gonna apply the grade. And woo, to me, this looks amazing. That's exactly what I was going for. Okay, let me show you the before and after before, after, before, after, very cinematic, very awesome. And as we go to the next clip, let me just apply this grade again, same thing. So um, so even as you're noticing too, this clip, uh, it, it does look a lot brighter than this one. So maybe these ones, I'll probably bring the shadows up a lot and I'll probably bring the highlights down. And then even this one, this one's probably gonna have to, the gamma's probably gonna get brought down and then the shadows gonna get boosted up. So now it's kind of like all matches. And from here, so even me too, uh, I'm still learning Da Vinci. By no means am I a professional like color grading person. Like I'm still learning as I go. I'm still changing my node tree. So this may change in six months. This may change in two months. But I'm just giving you guys tips on how to at least start how to at least go from there and how to make it look decent. So basically that's my way of making it look cinematic. Again, to each their own, many people have different node trees and there are many people that are more effective and better at color grading than myself. But I just wanted to make this video for you guys. Maybe you guys are still beginners like myself and you're trying to learn about DaVinci, learn about making cinematic footage. And hopefully this helped and I'll play the clip after to show you guys what it looks like, all those different things. And then you could try it for yourself and feel free to hit me up, feel free to comment and see what you guys wanna learn next. Hope to see you guys for the next video.